The other day, I revealed to you that Michelle Obama complained that she every day has to get up in the White House in a house built by slaves. Every day she has to get up with that memory. Every day. And I pointed out, well, first of all, the house was built by more than slaves, but secondly, I feel your pain, so why don't you leave? You could take your mom with you, the kids too, just leave. You shouldn't be offended. That, you shouldn't be offended about the place you live in. But it wasn't just built by slaves. Of course, slaves were involved. Non-slaves were involved. White people were involved. Scots and other immigrants as well. And yes, slaves. But if you're offended, and legitimately so, then just leave. All right, now more facts about the White House. It's amazing I get to sit here and correct the First Lady as if I'm dealing with some Marxist professor in my freshman year at college. It's just incredible. Over there at the D.C. Gazette via Instapundent. Okay, America, they write, it's time for a history lesson. When the first lady, Michelle Obama, claimed recently the house she wakes up in every day was built by slaves, the lady didn't realize just how badly she stepped into the historical quicksand. See, those who are enthusiasts of White House lore, this writer is one of them, he writes, or she writes, know a few things about the executive mansion. One of those little tidbits of trivia is that in 1948, after the leg of Margaret Truman's piano went through the floor, an assessment of the White House was made, and a long story short, the Truman family was more or less evicted to live in the White House guest house, along with a whole lot of furniture the day after the 1948 election. The West Wing, a Teddy Roosevelt edition, however, was still available for the President's use. When the announcement was made to the public, it was to inform the people on the fruited plain that the interior, anyway, of the executive mansion was on the verge of collapse. 150 or so years of repair upon repair without thinking about what was already there, taking into consideration that 14-inch beams might well be weight-bearing in nature, along with a concrete and steel third floor added under Calvin Coolidge's administration, and a whole host of other issues, including modernizations that were too heavy for the structure, and reuse of timbers after the 1814 fire, crumbling bricks, etc., Harry Truman had a legitimate fear of being in the presidential bathtub, wearing nothing but reading glasses, and landing directly on top of a Daughters of the Revolution tea. So after a number of scenarios were considered, including tearing the whole place down and rebuilding it, it was decided to gut the house and rebuild the interior. The White House, as we know the executive mansion today, was actually rebuilt between 1949 and the end of 1951 for a total cost of only $5.4 million over 80 years after slavery was abolished. The new superstructure of the house, the one that Michelle Obama wakes up in, includes two lower levels added, one is in a bomb shelter, a steel superstructure strong enough to hold everything up, closets and bathrooms on the second floor, not part of the original house. The grand staircase was reconfigured so the president could really make an entrance. Air conditioning was added. The public rooms, largely still in the original configuration, were then designed in the federal style, and it goes on. So in effect, the actual historical aspect of the house is almost strictly its sandstone exterior walls. And even then, those were dismantled and rebuilt after the 1814 fire. They're now painted white, and many well have been cut by slaves, but certainly weren't set by them. They were set by Scottish immigrants employed by the Irish architect James Hoban. The original material may have had some slave labor help, for which they were actually paid, but for the most part was done by skilled craftsmen, many of whom were Irish immigrants. So Michelle Obama, was the White House built by slaves? Part of the original, yes. But the part you're living in? No. And the sad thing is, millions of us who've never lived in that particular residence know it. And you don't know it after eight years, or thereabouts, waking up there every single day. Well, she may know it or she may not know it. She just doesn't give a damn. Because remember, the truth is, she's on the attack. She gives a commencement speech, and she's attacking. She's attacking America. She's bringing up slavery. You know, you give a commencement speech, it's supposed to be inspiring. This constant egomaniacal type of, of, of production, of drama. You're supposed to stand up there. These kids have worked hard, most of them. They're going to graduate. and You talk to them about the future. You give them encouragement. 
You tell them not to give up. You tell them in this, a country like this, the greatest nation on the face of the earth, everybody has an opportunity. Anyone can make it. Even Michelle Obama. Even Barack Obama. Even Joe Biden, that doofus. That's right. That's what you're supposed to do. That's what you say at a commencement speech. If you have some class, if you're a mensch, as we like to say. But she's not. She's an attacker, just like her husband. 